नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा विद द न्यूज वेयर वी टेक यू थ्रू द बिगेस्ट न्यूज स्टोरीज फ्रॉम अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी एम्फोसाइजेस बिगर रोल फॉर इंडिया इन न्यू ग्लोबल ऑर्डर एग्जॉर्ट्स यंग सिविल सर्वेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फाइल एंड फील यूली इलेक्टेड एमएलएस टेक ओथ इन पंजाब असेंबली इंद्रबीर सिंह निज्जर अपॉइंटेड द प्रोटेम स्पीकर covid cases increase in europe and asia center advises caution direct increase in genome sequencing alert over 3 lakh children in 12 to 14 year age group vaccinated markets exuded holy cheer sensex rises 1047 points nifty crosses 17285 rupee gains 41 paise at 75.8 per dollar and festival of colors holi begins with holika the hen the president the vice president and the prime minister greet people on the occasion a quick look at what else made news through the day today union health minister mansuk mandavia directs aggressive genome sequencing as covid cases spike in asia and europe Global rise in COVID-19 cases could signal a much bigger problem warns the World Health Organization. Year's first cyclone Asani likely to form over Bay of Bengal on the 21st of March. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurates seven-storey complex built in 45 days, a milestone for DRDO. The government issues draft notification on inter-country non-transport personal vehicle rules 2022. Last date of nomination for first phase of biennial elections for MLCs in UP extended till 21st March. Bihar board declares class 12 results 80.15% of students clear their exams. Holi celebrations in Uttar Pradesh state government announces additional holiday on the 19th of March Punjab chief minister Bhagwant Mann launches anti corruption helpline Aam Aadmi Party moves Supreme Court seeking directions to the state election commission to conduct civic elections News now in detail Prime Minister Narendra Modi said today that the whole world is looking towards India in the 21st century and after the covid pandemic the country will have to grow at a faster pace He was addressing the valedictory function of the 96th Common Foundation course at the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration Mussoorie through video conferencing He said civil servants have to understand the difference between file and field He also said they have to connect with the field for the real feel. Meri ye baat ab jeevan bhar yaad rakhiyega ki filon mein jo aankde hote hain wo sirf numbers nahi hote har ek aankda har ek number एक जीवन होता है उस जीवन के कुछ सपने होते हैं उस जीवन की कुछ आकांक्षाएं होती हैं उस जीवन के सामने कुछ कठिनाइयां होती हैं, चुनौतियां होती हैं, और इसलिए आपको नंबर के लिए नहीं हर एक जीवन के लिए काम करना The Prime Minister also dedicated the new sports complex of the Academy Happy Valley Outdoor Complex to the nation. Union Home Minister Amit Shah has advocated stronger trade and cultural ties and people to people contacts with all our neighboring countries. He was addressing a Foundation Day function of the Land Port Authority of India. Amit Shah said after independence the much needed focus on land routes has been missing. He congratulated the authority on trying to bridge the gap of 75 years within a period of 10 years. 25 साल के अंदर 
ये जमीनी मार्गों से हमारे व्यापार का लक्ष्य क्या होगा आप ऐसा करके पल्ला नहीं जाड़ सकते कि ये तो कॉमर्स मिनिस्ट्री को करना है कॉमर्स मिनिस्ट्री को जरूर करना है मगर हर्डल दूर करने का काम आपका है काफी सारे हर्डल यहां पर भी बने हुए हैं इसका हमने बारीकी से अध्ययन करना पड़ेगा हमने यह तय करना पड़ेगा कि 25 साल के अंदर जो मैंने कहा जन से जन का संवाद उसमें कितनी सुविधा हम निर्मित कर सकते हैं मूविंग ऑन Omicron cases across the world are six times higher than previous waves but India managed to contain its spread leading to fewer hospitalizations and fewer deaths as well. The Union Health Ministry said this was due to the rapid vaccination campaign in the country coupled with effective prevention measures and also early detection of the cases. 3536 cases have been reported in the week gone by. In fact the week ending the 15th of March 90.8% of the country's population has taken the first dose of covid uh, vaccine and 65.4% of the people have been given the second dose as well in view of the rising cases of the omicron variant of the coronavirus in some european and east asian countries union health minister mansukh mandavia has directed a high level of vigilance and surveillance the minister has called for speeding up the pace of genome sequencing in the country the health minister chaired a high level meeting on the covid vaccination which is underway in india Corona infections are increasing in countries like China, South Korea, Hong Kong, Vietnam, also Singapore as well as some countries of Europe. News now from states, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the year-long centenary celebrations of Malayalam Daily Matrubhumi. Matrubhumi publishes 15 editions of the Daily and 11 magazines as well. Its uh, Matrubhumi Books division publishes books on a wide range of contemporary subjects. Apna Dal S President Anupriya Patel met BJP President JP Nadda in Delhi after the party's victory in the just concluded elections in Uttar Pradesh. Nishad Party President Sanjay Nishad also paid a courtesy visit to the BJP National President. States involved in Sardar Sarovar Narmada project are yet to pay over 7000 crore rupees in unpaid dues to Gujarat. The state government stated this in the assembly. apart from gujarat madhya pradesh rajasthan and also maharashtra are part of the sardar sarovar narmada project the west bengal assembly adopted a privilege motion against leader of opposition shubhendu adhikari the motion has been referred to the committee of privileges adhikari had allegedly threatened four rebel bjp mlas with income tax raids for disrupting his speech in the house Tripura Deputy Chief Minister Jishnudev Verma presented a tax-free deficit budget of 26,892 crore rupees in the state assembly. There is an increase of 18.34 percent in this year's budgetary allocation compared to the previous budget. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M K Stalin on Thursday inspected restoration work in flood-affected areas of Chennai. He appreciated the speedy and efficient work. The city was inundated remember after the floods during last year's monsoon season. Goa's caretaker chief minister Pramod Savant and other leaders paid tribute to, to former chief minister Manohar Parrikar on his death anniversary. Senior BJP leader Manohar Parrikar had passed away on 17th of March 2019 after battling cancer. The BJP appointed Hidanand Sharma as the party's state general secretary in Madhya Pradesh. Earlier Sharma was looking after the work of co-state general secretary his appointment was made during the by elections in the state The Mizoram government will relax covid restrictions after a fall in covid cases in the state according to the new guidelines schools and hostels will be reopened for all classes from the new academic session starting the 5th of April Rajasthan saw temperatures of around 42 degrees Celsius in several places. The Met Department has issued a heat wave warning in the state. Odisha will conduct plus 2 annual board examinations for arts, science, commerce and vocational subjects in offline mode uh, from the 28th of April. The examinations will be conducted in a single shift from 9 a.m. onwards. Pakka houses will be built under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana in the backward areas of Rajouri district in Jammu and Kashmir. 
Work has been completed on 700 of the 2200 planned houses. And moving on now to news from the world of business and economy. The U.S. Federal Reserve on Wednesday raised interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point and projected its policy rate would hit a range between 1.75% and 2% by this year's end. It marks an aggressive stance against inflation that will push borrowing costs to restrictive levels in 2023. Here's a report. The first interest hike is about to hit American markets. It will be the start of a series of such hikes. Fed Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell explained the reasons. Inflation remains well above our longer run goal of 2%. Aggregate demand is strong and bottlenecks and supply constraints are limiting how quickly production can respond. These supply disruptions have been larger and longer lasting than anticipated, exacerbated by waves of the virus here and abroad and price pressures have spread to a broader range of goods and services. Additionally, higher energy prices are driving up overall inflation. America is dealing with an unprecedented inflation. Latest figures put it at 7.9%, which is the highest since 1982. Even the Federal Reserve accepts it did not expect inflation to go out of hand. Fast-changing global geopolitical scenario has made matters worse. The median inflation projection of FOMC participants is 4.3% this year and falls to 2.7% next year and 2.3% in 2024. This trajectory is notably higher than projected in December, and participants continue to see risks as weighted to the upside. So this is going to be a, a, an untested period. Again, we've never seen anything quite like this. To go from a pandemic, to go to the critical crisis that's going on right now in, uh, in Europe, uh, we just have never quite seen before. And these sanctions that have been placed uh, uh, on uh, Russia are going to create havoc in and of themselves for us. Being the world's largest economy, America impacts business around the globe. Steps to soak up extra liquidity could well squeeze out money from other parts of the world and push it towards USA. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And celebration in Asian markets continued on Thursday as well. Chinese government assurance for stability in the market and attractive valuations of the stocks, especially after Tuesday's fall, attracted investors. Hong Kong's Hang Seng was the biggest gainer. It was up more than 7% and ended the trade at 21,500 levels. Nikkei was also up around 3.5%. Taiwan weighted gained 3%, while Shanghai Composite was up by 1.4%. Indian markets were also bullish. Fed rate measures to check inflation in USA and gains in Asian markets gave traders a reason to celebrate an early holy on the bourses. On Thursday, too, Bombay Stock Exchange Sensex gained more than 1,000 points. It ended the trade with a gain of 1,047 points at 57,864. Mood was upbeat on National Stock Exchange as well. Nifty 50 gained 1.84% or 312 points, and closed at 17,287. And with that, time for a short break, but coming up ahead, Lake Powell in USA, the mecca of water sports, is in danger. Find out why on the other side of this quick break. हम पहुंचे हैं हस्तिनापुर कोर ज्योग्राफी ऑफ द महाभारत इज द रीजन नोन एज कुरु पंचाल कुरु पंचाल एक समय में एक ही राज्य हुआ करता था उसके बाद पांच ट्राइब्स अलग हटके उन्होंने अपना पांचाल पांच रीजन को जोड़ के पांचाल बनाया और उनके जो राजा थे उनके पांच बेटे थे तो उनको पांचों को एक एक जगह दी गई एंड वो मिलके एक कंसोलिडेट कहना चाहिए कि हिस्टोरिकली फर्स्ट कॉन्फेडरेशन बना और हिस्टोरिकल पॉलिटिकल कॉन्फेडरेशन डॉक्टर विवेक देवरॉय के साथ इतिहास में इस बार देखिए महाभारत का भूगोल आज रात साढ़े बजे सिर्फ सनसेट टीवी पर
for staying with us on the news. Time now for all the latest developments from the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Ukraine has claimed Russia destroyed a theater that was housing more than 1,000 people in the besieged port city of Mariupol. Moscow, however, denied targeting civilians and Russia's defense ministry said its forces had not struck the building. A bird's eye view of the drama theater in Mariupol city, allegedly bombed by Russian forces. A closer look gives a clear picture. According to the Ukrainian foreign ministry, Hundreds of civilians have been living here ever since their homes were destroyed. Such incidents may well be the hindrance to the peace process, which is now looking possible. Переговори продовжуються. Переговори заради України. Мої пріоритети на переговорах абсолютно зрозумілі. Завершення війни, гарантії безпеки, суверенітет, відновлення територіальної цілісності. Реальні гарантії для нашої країни. Реальный захист для нашей страны. Очень надеюсь, что вот тот деловой настрой, который сейчас не сразу, не просто, но все-таки начинает проявляться, и надеюсь, он возобладает, он дает надежду, что мы сможем по этой теме конкретно договориться. Хотя ясно, что просто изолированно провозгласить нейтралитет и объявить о гарантиях, on Wednesday, NATO defense ministers in Brussels categorically ruled out any role in setting up and policing a no-fly zone over Ukraine to protect against Russian airstrikes. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the alliance does not want the conflict to spill beyond Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Zelensky addressed the German parliament. He thanked the Germans for their support but also mentioned that it came too late. Zelensky also criticized German leaders over the country's business interests in Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday reiterated his reasons for the special operation in Ukraine, squarely blaming Kiev for sabotaging the Minsk agreement. He said the military operation in Ukraine is developing successfully in strict accordance with pre-approved plans. At the same time, Putin noted that the goal was not the occupation of Ukraine. Putin also called freezing part of the foreign exchange reserves of the Bank of Russia illegitimate. In the raging war, where life has lost respect, the funeral of a Ukrainian soldier was a rare sight. At least some were getting a chance to say a last goodbye. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Meanwhile, the United States has welcomed the order of the International Court of Justice, asking Russia to immediately stop military operations in Ukraine. Thirteen judges supported the ICJ order, Two judges, including ICJ's Russian Vice President Kirill Gevorgian and China's Judge Shu Hankin, voted against it. Ukraine had urged the International Court of Justice to intervene, arguing that Russia violated a 1948 treaty to prevent genocide. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price called it an important decision and said the ICJ had unequivocally ordered Russia to stop its military operations in Ukraine. News now from other parts of the world. Diplomats trying to salvage the 2015 Iran nuclear deal are continuing negotiations despite distractions caused by the Ukraine conflict. They now appear to be near the cusp of a deal that would bring the United States back into the accord and bring Iran back into compliance with limits on its nuclear program. Charity worker Nazneen landed in Britain after spending more than five years in Iranian prison. Although the Iran government does ascribe any political motives to her release, four U.S. prisoners were released in Iran after similar talks that happened in parallel to the nuclear talks. Optimists have reason to cheer, but roadblocks still remain in the revival of the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, there is uh, little time remaining given the nuclear advancements that uh, Tehran has made uh, that over time would obviate the non-proliferation benefits uh, that the JCPOA uh, conveyed. So this is an issue that needs to be worked urgently. It is an issue uh, that has had our urgent attention for uh, some time now. Uh, we still continue to believe that a mutual return to compliance uh, would be um, manifestly uh, in our interests, and we are going to uh, find out 
in the near term uh, whether we're able to get there. There is a Russian angle of the deal as well. The 2016 deal was signed between Iran and five permanent members of the UN Security Council. Naturally, for the revival of the deal, Russia will have to come on board. But as of now, America has imposed strictest sanctions on Russia due to Ukraine's invasion. In fact, on Tuesday, after his meeting with his Russian counterpart, Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amira Abdullahian said, now the deal depends entirely on Washington. Nevertheless, the Iran nuclear deal was concluded by Joe Biden when he was vice president in the Obama administration. He is therefore expected to do his best to take forward his own legacy. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Some other global updates in World Wrap. Sri Lanka's president said on Wednesday that his government is in discussions with the International Monetary Fund as well as other agencies and countries on deferring loan repayments. Speaking in a televised address, President Gotabaya Rajapaksha requested people's support by limiting electricity and fuel consumption to cope with the worst economic crisis in memory. He also asked the nation not to be discouraged and have faith in his steps to salvage the situation. The German cabinet approved plans for the 2022 budget that includes taking on another 99.7 billion euros in new debt to counter the consequences of the coronavirus crisis. But the German finance minister asserted the Russian invasion of Ukraine and fundamentally changed to Germany's outlook and said additional spending was likely to come. It also approved the 100 billion euro special fund to strengthen Germany's armed forces for which it will amend the country's constitution. A court in Cambodia convicted 21 people of treason for their non-violent political opposition to the government several years ago. Those convicted included seven exile leaders of the disbanded Cambodia National Rescue Party, each of whom received 10-year prison terms. They included party co-founder Sam Rainsy, who has been in exile since 2016. Rainsy has long been the harshest critic of Prime Minister Hun Sen, who has held power for 37 years now. A Honduran judge ruled on Wednesday to extradite former President Juan Orlando Hernandez to the U.S. to face drug trafficking and weapons charges. U.S. prosecutors in New York have accused Hernandez in recent years of funding his political rise with profits from drug traffickers in exchange for protecting their shipments. Hernandez has maintained that statements against him have been made by drug traffickers. His government extradited as a way to seek revenge against him. He has also denied any ties to drug traffickers. A Cuban tribunal sentenced over 100 people found guilty of participating in anti-government protests last year. It imposed sentences ranging from 6 uh, years to 30 years in prison against them for participating in the protests of June last year. 128 protesters were sentenced under the accusation of committing and causing serious disturbances and acts of vandalism with the purpose of destabilizing public order. One person was acquitted. A massive reservoir known as a boating mecca in the United States has dipped below a critical threshold. It is raising new concerns about a source of power that millions of people in the U.S. West rely on for electricity. There are not many boat rides on Lake Powell these days. Water levels have fallen below 3,525 feet, the lowest since the lake was formed by damming the Colorado River at Glen Canyon half a century ago. If the lake drops even more, it could soon hit Deadpool. The reason is hotter temperatures and less precipitation, leaving little water flowing through the overtapped Colorado River. Water scarcity is hardly new to the region, but concerns over dipping hydropower are increasing. Over 5 million customers in seven states, Arizona, Colorado, Nebraska, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah and Wyoming by power generated at the Glen Canyon Dam. But even as federal officials assure that water levels will rise once snow melts in the Rockies in the coming months, they are not sure the Glen Canyon Dam will keep producing the same amounts of hydropower in the years ahead. For the cities that rely on its hydropower, less water flowing through the Glen Canyon Dam will increase total energy costs customers will bear the brunt. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट सनसेट टीवी एंड टाइम नाउ फॉर ऑल द एक्शन फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स South Africa registered their fourth consecutive win in the Women's World Cup today, beating New Zealand by two wickets. In a thrilling match where the pendulum shifted from one team to the other a number of times, New Zealand were all out for 228 with 13 balls left, despite an innings of 93 from captain Sovi Devin. South Africa had lost eight wickets for 217 and New Zealand sensed a highest. However, Marizan Cap held strong and took South Africa to victory. All-rounder Marizan Cap had a star performance in South Africa's win today, following a great show with both bat and ball against defending champions England a few days ago. Cap again played a key role in the Proteas' win at Hamilton. After taking two crucial wickets with the ball, Cap scored 36 off 35 balls to take South Africa home along with a shaky tail. Two decisive Cap performances have helped South Africa in maintaining an unbeaten record in the tournament. Rafael Nadal battled past big hitting American Rally Opelka 7-6-7-6 to push his 2022 record to 18-0 and reach the quarterfinals of the Indian Wells ATP Masters. The 35-year-old Spaniard who won a record setting 21st Grand Slam title at the Australian Open in January and lifted the trophy in Acapulco last month stayed on track for a fourth title in the California desert. Third seed Iga Swiatek has booked a semi-final clash with former world number one Simona Halep after dropping just one game against Madison Keys to advance to the last four at the WTA Women's Tournament being played at Indian Wells. Halep, on the other hand, had an equally impressive performance against Petra Martic, winning 6-1, 6-1 in their quarter-final clash. Holi, the festival of colors will be celebrated across the country tomorrow. Holika Dehen, that signifies the victory of good over evil as well as the arrival of spring, was observed across the country today to mark the start of the festival of colors. The president, the vice president and the prime minister as well as the speaker of Lok Sabha greeted people on the occasion. And before we wrap up a quick relook at the headlines Prime Minister Modi emphasizes bigger role for India in new global order exhorts young civil servants to understand the difference between file and field Newly elected MLAs take oath in Punjab assembly Indrbir Singh Nijjar appointed protem speaker Covid cases increase in Europe and Asia center advises caution directs increase in genome sequencing alert over 3 lakh children in 12 to 14 year age group vaccinated Markets exude holy cheer Sensex rises 1047 points Nifty crosses 17285 Rupee gains 41 paise at 75.8 per dollar And Festival of Colors Holi begins with Holika Dehen. The President, the Vice President, the Prime Minister, and the Speaker greet people on the occasion. Well, so that's it from us in this bulletin. Thank you for your time and wishing all our viewers a very happy and safe Holi.